I need this green screen for my tutorials. And you, why you keep enabling him? Hey guys, and welcome to another very exciting... Oh, shoot, stop, stop, stop. Someone turn on the green screen. Welcome to another very exciting visual effects tutorial using the awesome software package HitFilm 4 Express. HitFilm 4 Express, unlike its bigger brother HitFilm 4 Pro, does unfortunately not include the advanced chroma key effect that is used to easily remove green screens from your shot. However, there is more than one way to eat a pancake and in this quick tutorial I want to show you how you can remove a green screen using HitFilm 4 Express. If you want to avoid having to manually rotoscope shapes or animate masks frame by frame to extract or remove a moving object from your shot, you're always best off using a green screen. I have already covered why and how to use green screens in a separate video that you can and should check out by clicking on this link up here in the top left hand corner. HitFilm 4 Express is a great free tool for filmmaking and visual effects and while it does not contain dedicated chroma keying tools, you can still achieve the same effect in just a few simple steps. While this is going to be a beginner tutorial, I will assume that you have at least watched my absolute beginner tutorial for HitFilm 4 Express. But now, before you get so bored that you wander off to actually go get a pancake, let's jump right into the tutorial. Herzlich willkommen zu HitFilm 4 Express and just as you're going, what the... No, this is not going to be a tutorial in German. However, given HitFilm 4 Express is a free software tool and lots of people like to use it, if you do want to see some more tutorials for it, just leave me a comment down below and I will see what I can do. To get started with this tutorial though, let's first import our footage. Let's come into the media panel, simply double click into some empty space and it will bring up the open file dialog. Let's select our Super Walter clip and as always, if you do want to follow along with this tutorial, you will find a download link to this clip in the description of the video. Then hit open to import the file into your project. And to bring this clip into our timeline, let's simply drag and drop it in at the very beginning. If HitFilm 4 Express pops up this dialog telling you that the editor sequence settings do not match the clip, that simply means that, well, your configured project does not match the clip you're trying to use either in the resolution, the pixel aspect ratio or the frame rate. So in most cases, you simply want to say yes and HitFilm will automatically update your editor sequence or your timeline panel to match the clip that you've dragged in in terms of all of the settings. Let's zoom in a little bit and play this clip back. And this is simply the clip of Walter dreaming of being Superman before he gets busted. As I have covered in my absolute beginner tutorial for HitFilm 4 Express, the editor timeline is for sequentially aligning your clips, so it's for editing. And in order to composite a visual effect shot, you need to convert your clips to composite shots. In order to convert this clip that we have here, the Super Walter clip, into a composite shot, simply right click and select Make Composite Shot. Let's rename this one to Super Walter Composite Shot and a composite shot is really just the equivalent of a composition in After Effects. Let's hit OK and here we are inside the composite shot and it currently only contains a single layer which is our Super Walter clip. You will also notice the newly created composite shot showing up in the media panel but for now let's concentrate on extracting Walter from this shot and removing the green screen so we can composite him onto something that looks similar to clouds to create a really cool Walter Superman effect. For that Come up into the left hand side of the viewer panel and select the freehand mask tool. Let's zoom out a little bit and let's draw a mask around Walter. Bam! And Walter is cut out. Let's scrub through the clip to just make sure that the blow dryer doesn't come into the shot at the top. But that actually looks alright. If it did, we could always adjust the mask as needed and make sure that we're not cutting off Walter's hands but nothing else gets into the shot. Cool, that looks alright. Let's zoom back in and let's get rid of the green screen. Let's come over into the effects panel. Let's go down a little bit to the keying tab, expand the keying tab and we are going to apply a hue and RGB key to this layer. To apply the effect, simply drag it onto the super water layer and let go. And that's really not what we want. Looks like some kind of retro American presidency poster. Walter for president. 
Obviously, the default settings for this effect will not do, so let's come into the controls panel. And in here, you will find the properties for the currently selected layer and all of the effects that are applied to it. So down here at the bottom under effects, you will find the hue and RGB key and you can technically also change it up here in the layer panel within the composite shot directly, but I like to do it through the controls panel. So let's expand the hue and RGB key. As you can see, the color to key out is currently set to red, which is absolutely not what we want. We want to get rid of the green screen instead. So let's click and hold on the color picker and drag the color picker onto a fairly bright area of the green screen and let go. Bam! And the green screen is gone. Let's zoom in and cool! That has actually done a pretty good job of removing all of the green screen. Now, the edge around Walter is a little bit rough and so the two main parameters in the Hue and RGB key that you can tweak are the tolerance, which will increase and decrease how much of the green you are going to key out. And you can also adjust the edge softness, which will simply determine how smoothly the edge is between Walter and the green screen that we're removing. I think I'm going to bring the tolerance down just a little bit more, just tweak this a little bit. And yep, this is actually not too bad. Another very useful tool for keying this out cleanly is also at the bottom of the Hue and RGB key, you will find a view matte option. This will show you very clearly which areas of the layer are going to be included and which ones are going to be removed. Up here at the top, I can actually see a little bit of, I believe it's the tip of Selena's blow dryer. So what I am going to do is I'm going to zoom back out and I'm going to select my mask and I'm just going to bring the mask in just a little bit more to make sure we get rid of that as well. Let's zoom back in, check this out. And I think that is actually a pretty good key. Let's disable the view matte option again and return to green screened Walter. And the last thing, if I zoom all the way back in, you can see that there's a little bit of a green spill on Walter on the side of his shirt, just around his head, in the hair a little bit. So I do definitely want to get rid of that as well. For that, let's return to the effects tab. And within the keying, you'll find a matte enhancement. So let's expand that. And under matte enhancement, we are going to find a spill removal. So let's drag the spill removal onto the super Walter layer. Let go. And did you notice the difference? So you can toggle the effect off. You can see the green edge on his hand, the shirt, back of his head. If I turn the spill removal on, all of that green nastiness is gone. So now let's zoom all the way back out and scrub through our composite shot and that actually looks pretty good. Let's collapse the Super Walter layer and now let's add a cool cloud backdrop that's kind of flying past Walter and then we're going to add a few clouds over him just to kind of add a little bit of this flying through the sky effect. First, let's create a sky colored background. For that, let's create a new layer and let's create a new plane. Let's call this one sky. The color, change it to something that you would imagine the sky to be. Let's hit okay, okay. And let's drag the sky plane below Walter. So Walter's just up against this bright blue sky. And just to make this look a tiny bit more interesting, come into the effects tab and let's search for the color gradient effect and apply that to the sky plane. Let's go over into the controls and expand the color gradient effect. I'm going to bring down the opacity, just the effect is a little bit more subtle. I just want a little bit of a sky gradient effect going on. But of course, feel free to tweak this in any way that you like. Let's collapse the sky plane and let's create another layer and let's create another plane. This one I am going to call clouds and I'm going to change the color to black and hit OK. I'm going to drag the clouds just below Super Walter but above the sky plane. Let go. So now Walter is on black and we're going to add some animated clouds that are flying past onto this plane and then blend it all together with the sky background. For that again, let's return to the effects panel and let's search for the fractal noise effect and let's apply the fractal noise effect to the clouds plane. Let go. And yeah, that kind of looks cloudy-ish, not quite. For one, I want to change the structure a little bit and obviously I want to have these clouds flying past Walter as so if he's zipping through the clouds. So let's come back into the controls panel, expand the settings for the fractal noise effect and expand the transform. And the transform allows you to move and rotate and zoom in and out these clouds. So I'm going to scale the clouds down just a little bit so the clouds in the background are a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to expand the appearance tab. Let's bring down the offset to make the whole clouds layer a little bit darker. And maybe I'll bring down the exposure a little bit as well. Eh, maybe offset could be a bit brighter. 
And now let's change the blend mode from none over to screen. And nothing at all happened. And the reason nothing happened is because we changed the blend mode of the fractal noise effect. So the fractal noise is going to be screen blended onto this layer. However, the whole layer is still just solid blended. There's no transparency, there's nothing. So you still get black and just a few clouds. So in the fractal noise, we can actually change the blend mode back to normal. This does not make a difference. Let's just collapse the fractal noise effect again. And let's expand the layer properties. And these are the properties for the clouds layer. And in here, you will find a blend mode. And this is the blend mode for the clouds plane for this whole layer. So let's change this from normal over to screen. Bam! And water is flying through the clouds. But it doesn't look realistic yet because the clouds aren't moving yet. So let's fix that next. Let's go back to the beginning of the composite shot. Come back into our controls panel. Let's collapse the layer properties and re-expand the fractal noise. Under transform, you will have a position tab. So let's expand. This is again fractal noise, transform, position. Let's expand this. And I'm quickly going to disable the visibility of my bottom sky plane so we can see the clouds a little bit more clearly. So now in the fractal noise transform position, you have a position property. And if we move the Y position downwards, we can make the clouds move. What we can do is we can animate the position property of the fractal noise. This will then make the clouds move downwards continuously and it'll look as if water is zipping through the clouds. And for that, make sure you're at the beginning of the composite shot and you will notice that in the controls panel, a lot of properties have this little circle next to them. This is equivalent to the stopwatch icon in After Effects and on the position property, if you click this, this will enable keyframes for the position property and it has already created a keyframe at our current cursor position. In order to see the keyframe in the clouds layer under effects, so let's expand the fractal noise, come down, expand the transform and expand the position. And there it is. This little diamond here represents a keyframe at frame zero. And while we're at this position, I'm actually going to change my position to zero, zero again. And let's scrub to the very end of our composite shot. And let's lower this. And it, this is going to create another keyframe on this property. So let's set this value to something pretty small to minus 10,000 maybe. And now if we scrub through the composite shot, you can see the clouds fly past Walter. That doesn't actually look too bad, but the one thing I'm really missing is the motion blur on the clouds, just to add some velocity to Walter just really shooting through the sky. Fortunately, HitFilm 4 Express includes effects for that. So let's come into the effects panel and let's search for blur. And you have a number of different options. You can actually apply a motion blur itself, which will calculate the motion blur based on the pixel movement within the layer, but it is quite computationally expensive and all of the clouds are always just moving downwards. So we know exactly which angle the blur should always be. So what we can use is we can use the angle blur instead. So let's come up a little bit. Let's collapse the cloud plane just so it's a bit easier to manage. And let's apply an angle blur to this layer. Come back into the controls panel and let's find the angle blur. There it is. Let's expand the angle blur. Let's change the angle to point downwards to 180 degrees. So the blur will smear our clouds downwards. And let's jack up the length to maybe around 150. I do want this effect to be pretty noticeable. So let's rewind our composite shot and play this back. And that looks much more energetic. Let's again collapse the cloud plane and re-enable our sky. The clouds are pretty subtle in the background, but they really do add to the overall feeling of movement. Next, given that we want to convey the feeling of water flying through the clouds, that would imply there would probably be some clouds in front of him as well. Right now, it still very much looks like Walter's is standing in front of a backdrop with some moving clouds. So let's place some clouds in front of him. For that, let's select the clouds plane. Let's duplicate it with Ctrl D, same as in After Effects. And let's drag this cloud plane above Super Walter. So now we have some clouds in front of him as well. However, I do want to tweak two small things. For one, let's go back to the beginning of the composite shot in the controls panel with the clouds layer on the top selected. Let's expand the effects and the fractal noise. And let's change the seed to randomize these clouds so the clouds in the foreground don't have the exact same pattern as all of the clouds in the background. And in the composite shot, let's expand the cloud layer, effects, and come into the fractal noise. Let's go into transform and expand the position property. And this is where we have the two keyframes that control the movement of the clouds. 
Now, I do want the clouds in front of Walter to move a little bit faster than the one in the background. It'll just add a little bit to that feeling of depth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the end of the composite shot to the last keyframe that we've keyframed to minus 10,000. I'm going to set that to maybe minus 15,000 just so that the clouds in front of Walter move a little bit faster. Let's rewind and play this back. Cool, that actually looks pretty good. The last thing I want to tweak is Walter's color. He doesn't quite fit in with the clouds in the background. He's a bit too dark and a bit too white balanced. He doesn't quite fit in with this overall shot. For that, let's collapse all of the layers in our composite shot again and come over into the effects panel. In here, let's search for the curves effect and let's apply it to the super Walter layer. Let's come back into the controls panel. Let's under effects, find the curves effect and expand it. Let me make this panel just a little bit bigger. And here are the curves. And I have covered how to use curves in my color correction and color grading tutorials. And I've got quite a few of those on my channel already. So you can go check that out if you don't know how to use this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make Walter a fair bit brighter because I do want him to blend in a bit better with that sky, maybe a little bit more contrast. And I'm going to come up in the channels. I'm going to change this over to my red channel. And I'm going to pull out some red to tint Walter a little bit blue just so he blends in a little bit nicer with that background. So what we have, Walter without the curves kind of stands out. It doesn't really fit in. And with the curves, he blends into the whole shot a whole lot better. Of course, I'm keeping all of this fairly basic. There's still quite a few things that you could do to make this shot look better. But I think for this tutorial, that should suffice. Finally, let's collapse all of our layers, return to the beginning of our composite shot, and let's play back our final Super Walter effect. And it's as easy as that. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. If you did enjoy this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. And if you do want to see more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials, don't forget to go to youtube.com slash surfaced studio and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.